So writing a proper method section is very important because you need to succinctly explain your experiment and the procedures that you took place and the materials that you used in order for somebody in the future, if they wanted to, to recreate your experiment and test what you found. Um, this is a fundamental part of science is retestability and being able to go back and verify other people's work or just understand how they did their work. So to write a method section, you do not want to put a list of materials. You need to mimic the style of a scientific journal and not a lab report. You also need to start with a detailed description of your study site. Um, this way, if somebody who is not even familiar with Louisiana, not familiar with Louisiana Tech, not familiar with Carson Taylor Hall, uh, could understand where this study took place. And then you need to describe the experiment in detail. Uh, is there anything else that the reader needs to know, which gives more data credibility? And are there any other factors that you will discuss in your discussion that need to be known, like site description, weather patterns, et cetera? So you need to start broad, and subheadings can be useful. Some common ones will be study site, study area, study design, experimental design, um, something that can break up your method section, which you will probably see a lot of trying to find papers. And your method section should conclude with a brief description of your data analysis, such as the name of tests that were performed, like an ANOVA or a t-test, as well as the dependent and independent variables. An example would be, we performed an ANOVA to determine whether resource availability impacted ant foraging. Specifically, we tested the null hypothesis of no difference in the number of ants recruited to food, which is your dependent variable, among salt treatments, which is your independent variable with high, low, and control. Your results section is one of the more important sections in your paper because this is where you're showing what you found. So you do not want to interpret your data. You want to completely just show your data and say it. So an incorrect example would be these results support our hypothesis, therefore predators decrease ant foraging. A better way to say that would be, in general, the food with presence of a predator had twofold lower ant foraging than controls. And in your results data, you will probably have graphs and you will have tables. Do not forget to reference these figures and tables in your text. And titles and descriptions are necessary for these graphs and tables as well. In tables, the description and title will go above the table. And in graphs, they will go below. Typically, what you're going to put here is a description of what the reader is seeing, uh, explaining what the different bars mean, what the standard deviation is, and just giving them a way to where if they just saw that graph without having read the rest of the paper, they may be able to understand what is happening there. So do not put in raw data in a table. Do not show any raw data at all. You want to have something that is descriptive and meaningful. And do not have tables of observation data. This can be said in plain text. It does not need to be put in a table. And if you do use a table uh, to show, like in this case, treatments with number of ants per minute, do include standard deviations and the means as well. So you should report your results and specifically your statistical analysis, including descriptive statistics with a magnitude of change. So one example here would be the presence of predator-reduced ant foraging, specifically ants forage nearly two-fold less in the presence of a predator, mean of 22 plus minus 10, which is your standard deviation, than in control patches, mean of 12 plus minus 8, with uh, a F value of 1 and 16, and a p-value of 0 0.03. So report the results of your statistical analysis in your results section. And if you need any help with that, there will be references on the lab PowerPoint as well as the PowerPoint from last week and the week before, which will give you a clear idea of how to report these. <laughs>